So this is John. He's coming in today for a possible removal of a lesion that's just in the preauricular area of his right ear. Um, it'll be hard to appreciate from, uh, from a video, but this is a has some distinct substance to it, and it's a little bit um, compressible. Uh, the big issue with this is John had a, a much bigger lesion like this on his leg, and surprisingly, when we uh, took it off and sent it pathology, it came back as squamous cell cancer. So this is the concern we have now, and, and the primary looks like it's to, to have been in his bowel. So now he's developed this area, and this is actually a little bit tricky in terms of taking it off. I've got a couple students working with me today, and they'll be helping me with it. So Kim, what would I be worried about with this area of the face? What comes out through this area? Do you remember what nerve is in that area? Yeah, the facial nerve. And, and to be honest, this whole section has to be very careful with because we sometimes see what we call pleomorphic adenomas in this area. And I send these to ear, nose, and throat because there's such, there's vascular components that are through here and you have to be very careful with it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to freeze it up. We're going to do a punch biopsy just so we can see what this lesion actually is. Do you want to hold that for me? So again, through this area, we're going to put some freezing in. Just going to feel a poke here. I'm just going to put some freezing underneath it. You're going to poke. Sorry, yeah, I know that stings. Now this isn't an infected field, so this should actually take the anesthesia quite well. So once it's frozen, you won't feel anything. Now, if this just turned out to be a basic cyst, we may just sort of change things a little bit and see if we can take that out. You okay? It's not hurting too much, John? No, I don't feel it. I can feel the coolness, that's it. You see that shaking a bit because I'm putting more pressure on the actual needle as I'm pushing that in and it's a bit tight in this space. No pain at all. Good. Now again, I usually try and put a little bit superficially and you'll sometimes see that vasoconstrict a bit. A bit here, poke. You're okay there, no problems? Okay. Very good. All right. All right, Jane, just grab me a punch, it's right there. It's the green. Yeah. Now in general, we're freezing these areas. We use lidocaine, that had a little bit of xylocaine in it. We've talked before about avoiding um, epinephrine when we're dealing with areas like the fingers, the toes, the penis, the nose, and sometimes parts of the ear. Now having said that, there's not a lot of data that supports it's a really big problem. So this is a punch biopsy. So what I wanna do is put it flush with the skin and then we're just going to rotate it back and forth. You okay with that? It's not hurting too much? Not even feeling it. Good. And then as you pierce through the skin, it'll sort of give all of a sudden. Just like that. And pop that up there. And do you want to open the pathology jar there, Kim, for us behind you? So just going to pick this up. Just like that. All right, clip it at the base. So you can see here, this is clearly not cystic underneath. Ah, you can see that there. Just turn your head just a little bit for me, John. We're just taking a look to see if anything looks worrisome through here. It doesn't look like there's any tissue type that bothers me with that. So all we're going to do is put a couple sutures in and then we should be done with that. And so this is why I'll always tell residents, you'll see lots of things that you don't quite know what they are and from a dermatological perspective you'll have questions. Um, the punch biopsy is immensely useful for us because now we can send that off and you could argue here they could probably get away with just one. I'm going to put two in. You can see it's through the margin, then I'm just going to put it back up through here, just like that. Let's grab that for us. So you see here again, so I want to put three throws around your needle driver, pull that tip through so it's almost through. You'll grab it and you'll pull it through until the, see how the tissues lie, the string lies nicely there, the suture material, and then you just pull that like that. Kim, do you want to just dab that for me? Dab that a little bit. So now the second throw, you go from the inside, 
You go around it once, grab your margin, and you pull back through. Just like that. Do that again. And one last time from the inside, turning out. Get a pair of scissors. So James just cut that there. Maybe about a quarter of an inch off the knot. Not down closer, closer. There you go. Good. Now I argue I could leave just the one, but I'm just gonna put another one right beside it. Now we just talked about this in the other room. So Kim, how far apart would you normally put sutures? About seven millimeters. Yeah, about seven millimeters is what we look for. Now closer than that, depending on which plastics group you talk to, they'll talk about tighter sutures, ends up having a little bit better surgical result, but seven millimeters is the standard. So you see this again, see how it's caught? I'll make sure it lays flat for us. This is the direction. Uh, so I go from the inside, loop around once, grab it, just like that, inside, once, just like that, and once again, from the inside, just like that. James, you want to grab the scissors again? Clip that, same distance, beautiful. Make sure it's nice and clean. You can see that sutures nicely, so it, that'll have a nice healing result. So again, I find sometimes you just get so worried about doing anything on the face, but that should heal nicely. And now we can send it off to pathology and we'll know exactly what we're dealing with. All right, that's it.